Hello, everybody. It's 3.30 in the morning. It's my day off. Well, got to work tomorrow, but... Uh, so, story time. I just uploaded to my Twitch. And you guys are interested. I stream uh, mobile games on my Twitch every once in a while. In the middle of playing one called Day Our Survival. I got the premium version. I've been playing it since it first came out. Uh, but I haven't played it in a long time. And I was figuring, you know what, let me stream it this time. It's uh, Adam underscore Swiggity Swooty. If you're looking for it. Or just type in Day Our Survival. Day, D-A-Y, space, capital R, space, survival, premium. I'm pretty sure I am the only person in America streaming it. A few Russian guys, but I'm pretty sure I'm the only guy in America who's streaming it. Um, so, here's a fun one for y'all. This one's, again, not really on the super scary side, but it was dangerous. And it was, it was, I guess it was kind of scary. Um, yeah, it was scary. <laughs> nah, I'm thinking about it. Alright, so, way back in the beginning of Near the beginning of my channel, I made a video called The Drunk Mexican, The Schizophrenic, and The Devil. I'm going to take one of those stories and elaborate on it more. Now that like I've told you guys, I've gotten more research. I want to go into the stories in more detail and explain them. And then I also got follow-up from people who I know who still work there. Or just from calling and asking questions. It, you know, I want to be thorough on my videos. But, um... So, first off, get my death stick going here. <sighs> Joy. Enjoy him while I got him because I'm quitting him soon. All right, so I'm going to go with the order in which I told them in that first video. If you don't want to listen to this one, I want to just go back to the beginning of the channel and find that one. Um, like I said, it's uh, The Drunk Mexican, The Schizophrenic, and The Devil. So I'm going to go with The Drunk Mexican. A while back, I was working for a company called... Well, doesn't matter. Uh, I was working in a Section 8 apartment complex. Or that's what I was told. I, don't, I didn't know Section 8 carried over to apartments. I guess it does. Um... So here's the thing. I was hard up for work. I was very hard up for work. It was right around when my mom first started getting sick. So I was working a lot. I was taking a lot of the jobs. I got a little dude above my head. <laughs> Those guys come out everywhere at night. Desperate for money. I was taking anything I could get my hands on. So desperate that I got I found a place that paid okay. It wasn't great. It's was an overnight shift working at this section eight apartment complex. Big red flag. It's in Riviera Beach. Not in a nice neighborhood at all. <laughs> so this is the setup. <clears throat> Me by myself. Yeah. In a basically very low income, predominantly black and Hispanic apartment complex. Not that that matters, but you guys, I'm just giving you guys the, the, the scene. I am the only white guard that's there. And I'm, in fact, I am the only guard that is there because during the daytime, there's no security. At night, they gave me a piece of shit patrol vehicle. This thing couldn't, you had to jump it to start it and you weren't allowed to turn it off until the end of your shift. Because if you didn't have a jumper, you couldn't turn it back on. Like at the end of the shift, you had to go get it fueled up. And your uh, whoever was relieving you would come and jump your vehicle after you gassed up and you drive it back to the site. And then that guard would just go home because, again, there was no day shift. So literally there was a guard whose job it was to literally just meet me at a gas station to jump this freaking car until I got my own jump set up. It was ridiculous. But they had the, gave me a patrol car. 
I wasn't using my car. You ain't paying me enough to put miles on my car and use my gas. No. So, like, they offered me to use the gas card for my car. And I'm, like, I'm not putting the miles on my car. Plus, I don't want people associating me with my car as a security guard, and they get mad at me one day and decide to beat up my car. So, here's the, here's the thing. So, I'm, I'm patrolling. My job uh, was to go through the parking lot. The buildings were shaped like in a U shape, and in the middle of the U shape was this huge parking lot. My job was to go through all the cars, find license plates that had expired registrations, and I wrote them a citation, or in some cases a ticket if it was they had multiple citations at that point. So, I was not liked. My job was literally just to ride around and give people tickets. You know, and I'd investigate. You know, I was armed. I had a vest on. Um... They gave me a radio. I don't know why. I didn't have backup, but I guess it made it look like I had backup, so I wore it. Now, I had a friend of mine who I used to work with at another post, and when I moved to this post, because one paid more, um, me and him were still really tight. He also worked the night shift. So what we would do is, is we paired up in a buddy system. So what he would do is, is he would plug in his phone, and he'd call me, and I'd have my headphones in, just one, with the, with the talk piece. And we would just, we'd watch each other's backs throughout the night. If something happened to me, he knew where I was. He knew the address of where I was working, you know, whatever, whatever. And he could call, he could call the police if I got attacked or if something went down because I didn't have backup. Same thing for him. If something went down and he couldn't get to a phone or he was working by himself too, we just watch each other's backs like security guards do. So I had only been there maybe two weeks if even and I also mentioned in another previous video this is the same site that I got stabbed it's another video if you look back Florida wildlife and plus I got stabbed uh, patrolling I find this black Cadillac Escalade nice paint job heavy tinted windows I'm already like I don't like the way this looks so, his registration is three years expired. I do what I gotta do. I get out of the vehicle, and I grab my little notepad with my little tickets. I start filling out the information. And while I'm filling out the information, I hear a lot of yelling all of a sudden. I can't quite place where it's coming from, because again, these, these apartment complexes all have porches. There's people playing music, there's people talking, arguing... You know, baby mama drama shit going on. It, it, noise everywhere. But I hear a lot of yelling pick up right as I started writing this guy's citation. And um, I'm just like, okay, whatever. And I'm about to put the citation on his car. And I hear two loud pop, pop. I thought it was fireworks. Stupidly. But in all fairness, if you live anywhere near Riviera Beach, you know people are notorious for firing fireworks off in the middle of the night in Riviera Beach all year round for no apparent reason other than it freaks people out. And I'm not even kidding. Like, it happens a lot. Hey, so I'm just shook because it was loud. And I'm looking around, I'm looking around. And I hear more yelling and screaming and carrying on. Most of it in Spanish. So, I go back to writing the citation. Pop, pop. Two more rounds go off. This time, I immediately freak out. Run around to the front of the vehicle. Because I was at the back of the vehicle writing up the citation. And I'm looking and I'm looking around like, okay, what the hell is that? I'm looking for fireworks. And I see them on the third floor. Actually, I'm sorry, these apartment buildings were four stories tall. He was on the third floor. And he's screaming and yelling, and I'm looking at him, and I realize he's got... I thought it was a baseball bat in his hand. It's a fucking AK-47. So, right, I know an AK-47. Anywhere I'll see one, because I own one, and I grew up in the hood. <laughs> but he's got a long rifle in his hand. He's screaming and yelling in Spanish at me. So I 
tell my buddy on the phone, call the cops right now. Now, he heard the first two pops, and he was already on edge. And he's like, you want me to call the cops? When he heard the second two, I heard him in my ear say, I'm calling the cops. I didn't really pay attention to it, though, because I was running around the vehicle. So I crawl underneath this Cadillac Escalade, which is very hard, mind you, with a vest on and a belt with a gun and all my other stuff. I had everything. I had handcuffs, mags, baton, the whole nine yards. The only thing I didn't have was a taser. Um, I crawl into the SUV. I'm freaking scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm being shot at. A lot of people tell me, why didn't you shoot back? I'll give you three reasons off tops. One, what if I miss? Where's that bullet going? I don't know who's behind him. Uh, that belt that could bounce off and go into the fourth floor and I could hit someone up there. And that particular sight, here's number two, made me carry full metal jacket rounds. They wouldn't let me carry hollow points because they were absolute idiots. I'm talking utter, complete, uneducated Idiots. I even showed them a YouTube video of why you should use hollow points and not full metal jackets, and they still wouldn't buy it because they believe that the full metal jacket rounds were the safer one and that the hollow point ones are the ones that were designed to go through things, even though I showed them a video showing them that is the complete opposite. But anyway, I digress. He has the high ground, point three. You don't shoot at people who have the high ground on you. When you have cover, take the cover. I crawled up under that engine block, and I stayed right there. Here's where it got scary, though. So my buddy on the phone is calling the cops. He's telling me, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, whatever. I'm like, bro, he's fucking shooting at me. He fired at least four shots at me. And he's like, just stay undercover, stay undercover. I pull my weapon out. I'm sitting here underneath this Cadillac Escalade, curled up in the fetal position almost, to make sure all, nothing of me is sticking out that he can see. And here's where it got scary. It got quiet. The whole neighborhood. I could tell I was being watched. The whole neighborhood. Everyone either went inside when they heard the gunshots go off, or they were on the patio watching it like it was some kind of freaking blood sport. I hear a door fly open, and I hear someone heavy coming down the stairs. That's how quiet it got. And I hear him thump, 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 coming upstairs, and I'm thinking, he knows I'm under here. And he's got an AK-47. I'm sure it's semi-auto, it doesn't matter. If he wants to shoot me under here, it won't be hard. So I have my weapon trained at the bottom of the stairs. And I'm just sitting there quietly. And he comes down, screams in Spanish some more. Boots and hollers. He, I could see the muzzle of the fucking gun near his like shins. I'm just like, oh my god, I'm, I, wow, this is not good. Again, people say, well, why didn't you shoot him? I'm not shooting at a residential building with full metal jacket rounds. Unless I absolutely have to. And at this point, I didn't have to. I kept my calm, kept my composure. Remember, I remembered my training. Locked and ready, but I did not shoot. He hears the police sirens coming down the down the way. My buddy's like, you know, oh, they're on their way, they're on their way. I'm, you know, um, I tell him, yeah, I can hear him, I can hear him. And he's like, where is he? And I'm telling him, like, he's right at the end of the stairs. He's literally on the other side of the lane. Like, so you know, I was where I. The, okay, so here's the the drive. Here's the apartment building. Here's the Escalade. So imagine this is the lane. Here's where he's parked with his back end facing towards the apartment building, and here's the apartment building. And he's at the bottom of the stairs of the apartment building, and I'm literally just right on the other side under his car. I wouldn't be surprised if he could see me. <clears throat> it was scary. <laughs> it was probably one of the most terrifying things that ever happened to me in the job when it came to a literal sense of, like, I could die. And I've had guns pointed at me and everything, but this one just... He hears the sirens, he goes back upstairs. I hear the door slam. I hear the slider door to his porch slam shut. I crawl out, and I'm still hiding behind the engine block. But, you know, like in the front of the vehicle, like five 
cop cars come flying in. And my buddy, I don't know how he knew exactly where I was, but excuse me, keep burping. They came straight to where I was, but not on this side, you know, blocking. They came on the other side. So I had to crawl under another car to get to the second lane where all the cars were parked, oh, going away from the building, and that's where they were waiting for me. And I crawled to them, and they had guns out and everything. I crawl out, I pop up, and they're like, you know, where is he, where is he, where is he? I point to the, the uh, you know, the floor and the uh, porch that I saw him on, and, you know, they have me hide behind the car, and they're like, are you okay, are you okay? And they're checking up on me, they're, you know, looking for me for wounds, I'm like, I'm fine, I didn't get hit. And they're like, what happened? I'm telling them, like, he, he discharged four rounds. I don't know if he was shooting at me or near me. They're like, you know, how didn't you know? And I'm just like, it's Riviera Beach, bro. <laughs> Gunshots, fireworks, this, it's, it's like ambience out here. So they go up, shields and everything. I think a, I think attack unit came in. I can't remember. It was, my, my brain was so scattered. Um, they go up. What I found out later is, is they kick the door in, and they found him, this Hispanic guy, like a 300-pound Hispanic guy. Turned out to be the owner of the Escalade that I was riding up. Drunk out of his ever-loving mind, passed out in the living room floor with the AK-47 on the patio. That was crazy. That was crazy. And uh, that was that was really the end of that. You know, they uh, paperwork out the ass. Um, my company gave me a, <laughs> a raise of a dollar. They asked me if I wanted, you know, to move sites, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I, I was so hard up and desperate for work that I was like, I can't. I can't. I got to stay. I got to keep working here. I don't have another job. I'm looking for another job. I can't find another job. Um, the, all the other sites, they had paid less. I couldn't take it. I had to stay. I know people think I'm crazy, but when you're working to make money to support your mom when she's sick, you, as you man up, do what you got to fucking do, bro. So, yeah, <clears throat> he put. ended up, it turns out, the four rounds he discharged went into the patrol car that I was outside of when I was riding him up. Two went into the hood of the car, um, into the engine area, and one went through the headrest. So if I was in the car and I had been sitting in the driver's seat, it would crack me right in the middle of my dome. And the second one went in the, pa uh, the back, uh, the rear passenger seat. Surprisingly enough, that fucking car still ran. I don't understand. Like, it was a piece of junk, but by God, it was a, it was a sturdy piece of junk damn thing would not stop. As long as you jumped that battery, that thing still worked. They got rid of it, of course, but I still found it kind of funny that they we jumped it and it, it started up. I guess a round went through the uh, what's it called? The radiator in the front. That's probably why they got rid of it. Anyway, so yeah, um, I ended up staying there for a little bit longer. Um, later, I got stabbed at that same post. That was the final straw. <laughs> But um, that was the drunk Mexican story for me. That was it. That was the closest I ever got to getting my damn brains blown out at work. All because of a citation. It was like a $50 citation. I have no doubt in my mind that guy was a drug dealer. Because you're in Section 8 and you have a Cadillac Escalade with tinted windows. With a perfect paint job. With nice rims. Don't tell me he's not in something. But, you know, that was it. So, I'll... Catch you up on the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the aftermath. So, months later, I quit the site, of course, as I told you, but I called up a buddy of mine who I know used to work there, and apparently he's still there. And he told me that now they don't have security at night. They have security during the daytime. And what they do now is, is they have cops there at night they don't even have the they have a security guy there but he doesn't really do much he just monitors like the general area and he knows people so he kind of like works with the police to deal with stuff and um yeah he told me that now it's at the point where they just keep cops there 24 7 
They're just always there. A lot of bad stuff happened there while I was there. A lot. Gang initiations, shootings, uh, huge drug busts. It was uh, it was crazy for such a small little community. Like it wasn't that big. It was three buildings. Uh, I would say. Thirty-two apartments per building times three buildings. It's not a lot, but by God, it was enough. So yeah, that was the aftermath. Now it's like a hot site. Now they got cops there all the time. And I was working there for a lot less than I should have been getting paid. We'll put it that way. So that dollar increase put me at fifteen an hour, but I needed the money. Well, here's my quick one for you guys. Have a nice night. I'll cover the other ones from that three-parter. More detail. I got a lot more details, especially for the one that's labeled schizophrenic. Um, yeah. So, have a great night.